Good evening. I'm Pastor Fred Cowardin, pastor of the Brian Baptist Church, Port Charlotte, Florida. Just like to share a few things from the Word of God uh, with you, maybe to help you. Uh, we, we are always concerned about the condition of men. You know, we're living in an era and a day and a time which if you had a lot of words to describe the hour in which we're living, I believe you could sum it up and bring it down to one word, uncertainty. God does not want us to live in uncertainty. God wants us to live in divine assurance. But in order to live in complete certainty and divine assurance, we must have that divine certainty, and we must have that divine assurance. And the place to get that is none other than the Word of God. So many folk are living, uh, in, again, as I preached the other day, in fear, frustration, uh, uh, all of these things. That they're not sure about uh, their life. They're not sure about our, uh, the way things are going in our country. They're not sure about their finances. They're not sure about uh, uh, tomorrow. And so on and so on it goes. Jesus met a man in John chapter 3. Everybody's familiar with it, I'm sure. His name was Nicodemus. And Jesus met him, or he came to Jesus, the Bible says, came to him by night. <coughs> Excuse me. And he, and he came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these things or miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus immediately analyzed this man. He knew his condition, knew what he needed, and he said these words unto him in John 3, 3. He, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That just simply means this. Unless you have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, have repented of your sin, called upon Him, and believed that He is God's only begotten Son, sent before the, even before the foundation of the world in order that we might be saved, He lived a sinless life, died upon a cross, shed His blood, and victoriously rose from the grave. What I'm trying to say briefly for a few moments is that apart from Jesus Christ, there is absolutely no assurance. If you are listening to my voice or, or watching uh, on the internet, let me share with you quickly and briefly from God's Word how you may know that you're saved. How you may have the assurance that if you were to die right now, this very moment, you close your eyes in death, you'd open them in the presence of God. Many, many, many folk do not have that assurance. They, 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 they fear death. They, they wonder what is beyond the grave. Well, I want to share with you what the Bible says, how you can have 100% assurance that if you were to die or when you die, and the Bible says it's appointed that a man wants to die, and I can rest assured with you today, one day you're going to die. The important thing is not that you're going to die, but where you're going to spend eternity. Are you sure Right now, this moment, that if you were to die before the sun sets or before the sun rises, you would close your eyes in death and open them in the presence of Jesus. You might say, preacher, how, I don't, uh, how do I know that? How can I be 100% sure? Because we've got so much false doctrine and false teaching going around, uh, teaching so many different ways to go to heaven. May I say this? Jesus said that He is the only way that you're going to get there. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no man 
cometh unto the Father but by me. So let me quickly give you <clears throat> five or six biblical assurances how you can know for sure that you are born again and on your way to heaven. First of all, you must recognize that you're a sinner and you do not deserve to go to heaven. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That all means all. We used to have a man in our church who used that word frequently and he would say, What does all mean? All means all. That means every man, woman, boy and girl needs to understand that they're lost. They, are, they were born lost, and they're on the road to hell, and they need to get saved, and you'll never get saved until, first of all, you get lost. So, number one, you must recognize that you're a sinner, and you don't deserve to go to heaven. Number two, you must recognize that the only way that you can pay for your sin is by trusting Jesus. In other words, when I say you paying for it, I actually misquoted that. Your sin has been paid for by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, on it there. In other words, you must realize you can't do anything about it. You, can't, you can clean up your life. You can change your way of living. You can uh, quit cussing, quit drinking, quit smoking. Quit kicking your dog, quit beating your wife, but none of those things will open heaven's door. You must understand there is no avenue short of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on it there. Uh, there. Then the third thing you must understand is because you can't do it, Jesus Christ did it on the cross. He paid the price for our sin by the shedding of His precious sinless blood that we might be saved. There is nothing short of the blood of Jesus Christ that will wash away our sin uh, on it. And but the third thing you need to believe and understand, I believe this is very important. A lot of folk leave this out when we're talking to folk about getting saved. There's a, there's a fourth thing you need to understand. You must believe that this Jesus, who lived 2,000 years ago, a sinless life, he died upon a cross to pay for our sin. His blood was shed that we might be cleansed from our sin. But you also must believe that this same Jesus rose again from the dead. We serve a risen Christ. And I submit to you, I, I believe this, all of the, the, the cross, the blood, the suffering, the, the punishment, all of it, the dying of Jesus, would have been of no avail whatsoever had he not victoriously rose from the grave. In just a few weeks, we're going to be celebrating Easter Sunday, the celebration that he lives, he lives. And so I submit to you for a little bit, you need to understand that it's all about Jesus. It's not about the church. It's not about baptism. It's not about uh, uh, cleaning up your life. It's not about a lot of things. It's all about Jesus. And Jesus said to this man, you must be born again. Short of being born again, you will not enter heaven's doorway. How do you get born again, you say, preacher? Well... Jesus went on and answered that question in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world 
to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now here's the clincher. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Do you have the assurance in your heart beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have been born again? If not, I invite you to bow someplace, somewhere, sometime before God. Confess Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, repenting of your sin, claiming His shed blood on Calvary as the cleansing power, and trusting Him for everlasting life. I pray by the grace of God that you will do that. For without that, there will never be any assurance at all. May God bless you and thank you.